So the internal energy is the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy. And that, that would be nice to know, all right? So if you had a, you know, a gallon of gasoline, you could ask the question and we could figure it out. How much potential energy, kinetic energy does that gallon of gasoline have at 25 degrees Celsius? Okay, sure, why not? You know, it'd be even better. How much energy can we get out of that gasoline when we burn it inside of a you know, combustion engine? How much energy can we use from that? Turns out that's a much more useful and uh, much has a lot more applications. How much energy can we get out of a system? Or transversely, okay, if we want to do a reaction that might be take energy, how much energy do we have to put into the system to make that happen? Okay. And so most of the time, we're not interested in just internal energy and chemistry. We want to know about the change in internal energy, so or delta E. And again, we use that, the Greek letter delta, for change. And the change in energy and the change in anything we talk about this semester is always going to be the final minus initial. So the energy of the final state minus the energy of the initial state. So delta E equals E sub F minus E sub I. Final minus initial, final minus initial. We'll hear that a lot, especially like the first half of this class. Most of my Gen Chem 2 lectures can be summarized as final minus initial, lame joke. Final minus initial, lame joke. Final minus initial. But I can bust out a laser pointer, make it better. All right, so it turns out that's all we need to know. If we want to know about the change in energy of a chemical reaction, all we need to know is the internal energy of the, of the system when the chemical reaction's over and when it started, okay? And uh, we can do that because it turns out change in energy in a lot of thermodynamic functions are state functions. All right, so what's a state function? All right, so a state function is a property or a measurement that can be determined by knowing only the initial and final states. And that's illustrated in uh, this illustration, that's, that's what illustrations do in science textbooks, they illustrate things. All right. So let me point this out to you, laser style. All right, so we got this mountain. All right, here's the mountain. And it turns out there's two paths up the mountain, okay? Path A and path B, all right? Path uh, A kind of goes up the face of the mountain and kind of meanders up the mountain. Path B takes a more direct approach up the side of the mountain and goes straight up. Right? So there's two measurements you could worry about for this uh, uh, mountain. Okay? The two uh, measurements would be elevation change, how, you know, how much your elevation changed, change in elevation, or change in distance, how far you traveled. All right? The uh, elevation change is an example of a state function. Doesn't matter which path you took. If you started at the bottom and ended up at the top, your elevation changed 10,000 feet. Didn't matter what happened in the middle. All right. 
Uh, distance traveled did depend on what happened in the middle. If you pa chose path A, it took you 12 miles. If you chose path B, it only took you five miles, okay? So distance would be not a state function. All right, so that's a pretty good example. All right, so that's the state function. It turns out not everything in chemistry is, uh, but a lot of thermodynamic functions are. Our next uh, topic, kinetics, is not a state function. So we're gonna have to worry about what happens in the middle. And it turns out kinetics is the study of how fast or slow chemical reactions. And it turns out we can do things in the middle. We can speed up chemical reactions. We can slow down chemical reactions because they're not state functions. All right.